Welcome to another thing. I'm Larry Menti. There is an educational revolution in this country. Parents and educators are concerned about the pressure we put on our students to excel with an unhealthy emphasis on test scores. And that leads to more homework, more tests, and less free time. And that can lead to less sleep, less joy, more stress, and even more serious consequences like hospitalization, even suicide. In a moment, we'll talk to a local superintendent who wants to make his schools more joyful. But first, Ellen Kaloje has more on stressed out students and what we can do about it. Ellen. Thank you, Larry. What's happening here in West Windsor, New Jersey, is really a microcosm of what's happening all around this country. So many students are feeling so much pressure to get into an Ivy League college or get a scholarship. So one school district is taking action. What I'm seeing is that younger and younger children are starting to be concerned about this. It's not just high school students. It's, it's really trickling down into the elementary schools. Catherine Foley is 100% on board with her superintendent's decision to focus more on the whole child in school, not just academics. That's why she started a growing movement called Take Back Childhood, because she's tired of the rigorous demands on all kids. When her son Stephen was in fourth grade, he told her something she'll never forget. He came home, he was very upset. I asked him what was wrong. He said, um, I'm not going to amount to anything. I was shocked and, and asked him what he meant by that. And he said, he said, I, I have nothing to put on my resume. On the other side of this debate, you have Helen Yin, a mother starting her own group against reforms by the school district of West Windsor Plainsboro to ease up on students. Most of the parents came to the school district for the high um, standard of academic programs. And now by cutting back, by um, limiting all the opportunities and options, we feel it is dumbing down the school district. Administrators have eliminated midterms and finals in favor of common assessments. They created no homework nights, and they started the Right to Squeak, a music program that makes it open to more average students instead of just superstars. I absolutely don't believe in dumbing down the curriculum. What I am asking for is that administrators and, and teachers um, bring our programs in line with a broader trend in this country. Employers and college administrators are, are now saying that they want something beyond just somebody who, who makes good test scores. We really want to um, see that the uh, reforms to be evaluated and assess the results before any new reform will be implemented. Are you confident that will happen? I'm very confident because we trust the school districts, prof uh, they are professional educators. We also trust all the parents because all of them are thinking about their children. They want to do the right thing for their children's future. Now, some elite school districts in California and Massachusetts have seen what's called suicide clusters, where students have just given up hope. But certainly no one on either side of this issue here in New Jersey ever wants to see that happen. Reporting for another thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. To continue our conversation now on the revolution about testing, over-testing, too much homework, not enough recess, not enough free time, not enough arts in the schools. Jerry Jellig is superintendent of the South Brunswick School District. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. Uh, let, let me start back a couple of years. And uh, I have a theory about this, and you tell me if I'm correct, that there was a feeling I remember that our students weren't keeping up with the rest of the world, that we were falling behind in education. And there may have been an overreaction to that, the no child left behind, lots of testing, lots of emphasis on schoolwork, and it seemed like <clears throat> homework increased. Now what we're seeing is a protest, a revolution to that, with parents who are saying there's way too much homework, there's way too much test, they're opting out of tests. Is that fair? Is that the history of this? Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I, I think there was some empiricism behind the fact that we were not maybe faring as well as we would like against some, some other countries. A, a little nefarious in terms of trying to align how we were achieving with them, with different instruments and, and the like. But I think there's no question that... Have we caught up, by that, the way? Well, I, I don't know that we've caught up. Uh, I, I think that we've made progress. I think there's evidence that we're doing a lot of things right. But I think there, there was a hyper proclivity to assess everything and to measure ourselves against entities that, that are, are really difficult. To, to measure. So that led to obviously NCLB, which I happen to be a defender of on many, many levels, including not the least of which is the, our ability to, to surface learning um, gaps in different subgroups, which before NCLB did not exist. 
So I think there's many virtues behind assessment. I don't stand here in opposition to assessment, you know, quite the opposite. But we need, we seem to need analytics on everything. Are, are there true analytics on education or are we fooling ourselves that that's the best way to educate children that they can take a test? Yeah, so I think that's a great question. And I think when you say analytics, I think implicit in that is the suggestion that everything can be, can be assigned a number, so it can be quantified. And I, I, I do suggest that that is not possible. Uh, one of the things that we've done in South Brunswick is we've really broadened our, our inquiries and include qualitative research and actually trying to, to know school experience, trying to know how kids experience their school day. I mean, just, just last week we had Dr. Sharon Ravitch from the University of Pennsylvania come out to our school and, and actually train 50 of us, leadership and faculty alike, and how to spend a shadow day with students from the moment they get off the bus until they leave at the end of the day and experience all the messaging, all that they hear, see, and feel so we can collect that data and understand exactly what is happening in their lives, inclusive of assessment and homework and all the stressors that I, I think from my standpoint have made learning less joyous than I would just as soon have it be. There was a superintendent in Princeton mm -hmm. that put out a 16-page letter talking about, uh, or I guess there were 16 points, talking about how he wanted to change things at the school because yes. they were putting too much pressure on the kids. Mm -hmm. And he saw the adverse effects of that, kids being hospitalized, kids not wanting to go to school, kids not liking school. And there was some pushback to it. Yes. And it seemed like it went along racial lines. Th there were white parents who liked the idea. They mm -hmm. wanted to pull back. But there were Asian Americans sure. who didn't like the idea, that they yeah. thought it was a dumbing down. Who's right in that? Well, I don't know that anyone's right, and I, and I agree there are clear trend lines. I don't think they're they're um, entirely consistent along different you know ethnic lines. But but I, I I understand the desire to compete and to prepare kids in a rigorous way, and I and I as a father of four am, am very much in support of that. I also feel like there are... By the way, it wasn't just me saying that before you say that it wasn't just along racial lines. That's not just me saying understood. that. Understood. No, 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 that I, was I, the I, superintendent himself saying yes. that it, it, was, it was divided along right. racial lines. And I believe it was West Windsor Plainsboro who, uh, who, who did that study, and, and, I, and I'm, Dave's a colleague and friend, and I think he has it right. So there is no question that this is not settled law for all people, and we're all looking at this a little bit differently. I think that we, there, we do have more in common than, than where, we, where we might disagree. What we all, I think, believe is that we love our children, we want them to be well prepared. We want them to be joyous and enjoy the process of learning so that it continues when they leave us. And to that end, I think we can all agree that it probably is time to step back and look at what we've created and see if we can't make, at the margins at least, some improvements to make the experience for kids a lot more fulfilling. Is there research that more homework makes smarter kids? No, I, there's not research that, that more homework makes smarter kids. And I, I think wh where the homework debate is really going is, is uh, a, a true understanding of has homework evolved as curriculum has, as pedagogy has, as assessment has. And I, I think there's evidence, one of my colleagues in South Brunswick um, who directs all of our professional learning would suggest that it has not advanced, that it, in fact it is still being done as it was in the 70s and 80s. So th I think where we're going, I hope, is, is perhaps less homework, but better homework, more meaningful homework, never punitive always in support or extending what was covered during the day. And you know, as the curriculum grows, I am empathetic to teachers because where else are they going to cover this growing corpus of material but when the school day concludes? Because no one is talking about changing the school day. That would have so many effects and outgrowths that I don't think we're prepared as a state to even take that on. Let's wrap this up by looking ahead. Let's look a couple of years ahead. Yes, sir. Do, do you see a positive effect of what's happening now and do you have a fear that the pendulum may swing too much the other way sure. in reaction to the over-testing and the homework and all of that? Well, I, I'm very optimistic, so, so discount me on that or, or factor that in. I, I think that in two years, I think in, in two months, and I certainly can speak for my district, which is so thoughtful about this work and has been for a long time in preceding me, we are getting, going to get to a better place where we understand assessment for its value, but understand also its limitations, and really create the kind of school district that can celebrate all kinds of learning, that which can be measured on a test and that which cannot be measured on a test. And I, I think that all districts want to make that progress, and I, I happen to think that we'll be in a much better place, and I don't worry about us going you know, too far away from assessment. The, the, the measurement era that we're in, whether it's in, in the corporate world, the athletic world, or certainly um, where I am in the K-12 environment, it's not going away. We need to embrace that, not fear it, 
but we also need, need to, I think, realize its limitations, and that's well, the challenge. When I was pre-interviewing you, yes, you said something that I, that I loved, and you said, we want to create more joyful students. We yes. want them to want to be at the school and to want to learn, and, and of course, that just makes a better student and probably a better human being, so I applaud you on your efforts, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank I you for coming in today. Jerry Jellig, superintendent of the South Brunswick School District in New Jersey. We're going to continue this conversation when we come back and talk about the stress on students nowadays because of some of the things that we just talk about when another thing continues.